13,410 feet, thrust up over millions of years by buckling and folding and warping of the land, as water, ice, and wind carve the mountain faces. This is Mount Rainier. It's Washington's largest mountain and also one of its largest tourist attractions. It brings in millions of visitors each year. You see it all over logos and billboards around this state. I mean, hell, it's on the license plate. And this is a pamphlet telling people nearby what to do when it erupts. Look closely and you'll see that it looks a little different. There's no mention of the lava and ash that we usually associate with dangerous volcanic eruptions. Because what makes Rainier so dangerous isn't fire, it's ice. Before we get going, I do want to quickly thank my friends over at Envato Elements for sponsoring this video and this trip. If you haven't heard of them before, Envato Elements is a massive library of stuff. And I say stuff because it's a little bit of everything. After Effects templates, footage, photos, motion graphics, all the way down to like Google Doc templates, email templates, WordPress themes. They've got pretty much anything you could ever possibly need to run a creative business all in one affordable subscription. That subscription, of course, has you covered for all of your personal and commercial work, so there's no need to worry about complicated licensing. All right, here's how I would use it for my own motion graphics. Let's say I wanna spice up some archival footage for a historical sequence. First, I'll add a film border overlay, and there are tons of these to choose from. We're also gonna need a sprocket on the side. Yet again, dozens of options to choose from. I'll add a bit of film grain and film scratches for added texture. Yet again, hundreds to choose from. And finally, I'll finish it all off with a nice light leak to transition the effect in. And that's just one example. I use film burns, light leaks, backgrounds, overlays, all over my videos. So if you'd like to try it out for yourself, there's a link in the description of this video that you can use to get a seven day free trial. Thanks again to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video, sponsoring this trip. And now let's move on, go back to talking about one of the most beautiful and most dangerous mountains in the world. Mount Rainier is what's called a decade volcano. It's one of 16 volcanoes around the world that are thought to be particularly dangerous. It's a little surprising considering it's such a big tourist attraction, but yeah. Mount Rainier is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. There are four main factors that make this volcano such a hazard, and you can see all of them by looking at it from above. First of all, this mountain is huge. I think people know that, but I don't think people really understand just how absurdly big it is. There are two different ways to measure the height of a mountain, elevation and prominence. Elevation is the height of a mountain's summit in relation to sea level, whereas prominence is its height in relation to the terrain around it. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's pretty much what it is. Mount Rainier has an elevation of 14,411 feet, which is impressive, but it has a prominence of 13,212 feet, which is insane. Compare that to the Grand Teton in Wyoming, which has a prominence of 6,529 feet, less than half of Mount Rainier or the Matterhorn in Switzerland with a prominence of 3,412 feet. Rainier is the size of almost four Matterhorns. Even K2, the second highest mountain in the world, just shy of Everest, has a prominence of 13,189 feet, 23 feet shy of Rainier. So if you go by elevation, this is a really big mountain, but as far as how much of it you can actually see at once, it's one of the biggest in the world. This mountain's also covered with glaciers, 25 of them to be exact, more than any other mountain in the US. They cover 35 square miles of ice. That's more ice than all the other volcanoes in this part of the country combined. It's a stupid amount of ice. The problem with having so much ice on a volcano is that if it erupts, the surface of the rock heats up, melting those glaciers. That melted water will then mix with debris and ash to create what's called a lahar. You can think of a lahar kind of as like a river of concrete. They can travel 50 miles an hour, be hundreds of feet deep, and pretty much destroy or bury anything in their path. That can mean homes and businesses, but also roads, power, and water sources. And that can mean like food and supply shortages 
all over this area. Now, these glaciers are the source for five major rivers, and those rivers have carved deep, wide river valleys that extend out from the mountain. So if it were to erupt, those river valleys create this perfect path for those lahars to flow through and basically just destroy a bunch of stuff. And finally, there are a ton of people here. The PNW is beautiful, so the number of people moving here is rising, and Mount Rainier National Park attracts almost 2 million visitors a year. Several towns have grown up within these river valleys, and the rivers lead right to the suburbs of Tacoma. A study from the U.S. Geological Survey in 2015 found that over 90,000 people live in these Lahara zones, along with over 50,000 people working in businesses in the area. Zoom out and you can see exactly how this goes down. This giant mountain erupts, melting these glaciers and creating lahars that flow through these river valleys, threatening these communities. The good news is that we have a pretty good understanding of how this works, and there's a good chance Rainier will give everyone a heads up. An eruption is usually preceded by earthquakes, volcanic gas, and deformation, like the volcano literally changes shape before it erupts. Washington does have some systems in place to warn those nearby if the mountain erupts, and for the record, the general consensus is that you should leave and get to higher ground as quickly as possible. Three of the four large river valleys around Rainier have dams, which could be drained and used to stop the Lahars, which is a pretty gnarly strat. But the bottom line is that evacuating such a large area is really hard. And it's important first and foremost that people understand the risks. As menacing as it can be, I think the danger is part of what makes this mountain so captivating. It isn't just beautiful, it's imposing. When you're in the Northwest, you can't really escape it. You can always see it, you can always feel it. You are always in the shadow of this sleeping giant. Rainier may collapse someday into its own cauldron, leaving a giant crater to fill with water. Or it may explode again and rise still higher. Small earthquakes rumble now deep below the dome. The volcano lies in a fretful sleep, dormant. 